with you about the nineteen getting the the same award from Wine Doctor. That's that's really a significant achievement. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the people in Brancaya were saying the same thing about their their vines as well, where uh, their operation is relatively recent. I think twenty years or something uh, when when they first started planting and. They're saying they're seeing the same thing, not with Nero vines, but with Cabernet and, uh, and the Merlot in particular. Suddenly it's hitting the sweet spot uh, where everything is right. It's just uh, that evolution is, is, is very impressive. I'm just wondering, Alessandra, before we start, um, what I'd really like to do is I'll just introduce you quickly and then um, yes. ask you to compare 17 and 19 Pinot Nero together, and then we'll ask yes. the guys to look at the three Campanaio side by side. I think that'll be the okay. best way to do it, and really to focus in on um, the question of vintage, um, which yes. is uh, going to be particularly useful for us tonight. Hello. Oh, Luis here. Okay. Oh, ciao, Lou. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Ciao, come va? Tutto bene, tu? Eh, abbastanza bene. Felicissimo di rivederti, felicissimo di rivederti. Anche per me, grazie. Give me a look at you. You look okay after Dude. COVID. Yeah, I, I lost, uh, I lost uh, 17 kilos. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. But uh, was a was a, a real uh, tough moment in my life. Hmm. Real tough moment because uh, I risked the life, and uh, but now it's okay. Now I did uh, yesterday uh, a, a global uh, check of my body, uh -huh. especially especially with uh, the tomography that they check uh, individually uh -huh. piece by piece, and they Good. said uh, that. Uh, Pneumonia is uh, almost gone, but uh, I still have some little, little, little residual at the bottom. Yeah. And uh, but uh, I honestly breathing, uh, even uh, doing uh, body exercise, uh, I don't feel uh, as a uh, really stressed. So I okay. I feel. Are you, good. Are, you, are you back on the bicycle again? You're doing the cycle. Yes, 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 yes. Well, okay. I, I already already doing uh, 70 75 kilometers oh, not, not 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 150 like before but 70 75 I am uh, I am I'm happy at the moment I am happy so because uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling good I'm feeling good. Uh, positive positive oh well that's good news I was worried about you how how yeah uh, really, I I was really scared because uh, was uh, was a very was a very critical situation for for some weeks, mm. and uh, but thanks God I have to make uh, some more bottle of good wines. Fortunately, <laughs> good for you, my friend. Fortunately, 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 yes. Thanks very much, Lou, for your concern. Thank you very much. No, no, I was, I was getting the news and I was really worried because, you know, it, was, it sounded bad. It sounded very bad. Also, because yeah. so many of my relatives are from uh, Vicenza, yeah, there it wasn't so bad, but a little bit further north up at Bergamo it was terrible, right? Yeah, mamma mia. But uh, in the moment when I, when I had the virus, uh, so end of March, uh, all part of Italy was uh, in a in a very uh, difficult situation. So from mm. north to south, all regions in red zone, uh, all areas in a mm. very very critical, and uh, and the, the 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 very horrible thing is that this uh, disease uh, bring you from nothing to 100 in three, in three days. So uh, feeling the, like, like today to, to be almost tired in four days. 
So for me, it was this was uh, the, the the most critical things, no? Because in a progressively hour by hour, you feel uh, the situation that is going uh, is going down, is going down, 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 and uh, you really have the perception that you you are dying. You are dying because you can't breathe. So you, you have like uh, no people. I, I don't know in English when. Qualcuno ti strozza la gola, no? So you understand what I mean? So, yeah, dr like this. yeah, drumming, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, incredible, incredible, incredible. Only, only incredible. So there is only one word. But again, I thanks, uh, thanks God to, to save me. Uh -huh. Life's too short, my friend, life's too short. Yes, yes, uh, yes. We got you here tonight, which is good. Unfortunately, we can't be in Italy this year, at least not yet. I mean, it's, it's really annoying me, but we'll get there soon. We'll get there soon. That's it. Now, Rob, have you got um, bandwidth? I've yep, got, I'm good uh, to go. You're good to go? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just muting something. Everything's frozen at my end. I can't see anyone now. Uh, that might be my problem rather than yours. Yeah, no, I can hear and see everybody, so we can kick off. So uh, let me just uh, get the recording going. Um, welcome, Alessandro. Thank you so much for coming today. Um, it's great to see you in real life so soon after the Castellari launch a short while ago. Um, for those who aren't aware of uh, Podero Monastero, it's uh, Alessandro's private project, I guess, so many famous winemakers consider um, th as their dream to actually make their own wine. And so few of them get the chance to really do it as Alessandro has, and more particularly with such great success that he's enjoying at the moment. Uh, Alessandro only makes two wines, Pinot Nero, which the rest of the world knows as Pinot Noir, and um, his, uh, his Cabernet Blend, um, which we're gonna look at three different vintages tonight. So uh, let me hand you over to Alessandro Alessandro, I just wanted to, uh, just before you, you, you talk about these two Pinots, so jars one and two, um, uh, coming, uh, we were just talking in the, in, the, in the prefix before we started tonight about how impressed I was with the 16 when we tasted it. Uh, I tasted it uh, socially a couple of months ago in Singapore and it, the wine really has the sense of having grown up. And uh, I, I slur texted Lou, he's of the unfortunate recipient of so many of my drunken tasting texts. And um, I texted him late at night to say, this is amazing. This wine is just so developed and, and has come of age to such a great degree. And um, that was the vintage that uh, the wine doctor um, in Italy gave the best Pinot Nero in Italy. And you now tell me that the 19, which we're looking at tonight, jar number two, has again been awarded the best Pinot Nero in Italy for 2019. So. Off the back of that, I'm super keen to hear what you say about 17 versus 19 in front of us today. So over to you, Alessandro. So first of all, uh, once again, uh, uh, thank you to give me this uh, wonderful opportunity. I'm uh, really happy and honored uh, to, be, to be represented by Wine Exchange Asia. And, uh, and uh, Podere Monastero, it's a very little, uh, it's a very little project in uh, Castellina and Chianti, as you said, uh, is my personal, uh, is my personal project. And uh, we are uh, located in in the highest part of Castellina and Chianti, so 550 meters uh, elevation. And uh, this this is kind of a, a realization of my uh, dream that I have. Uh, in, in, in my mind uh, since I was at the winemaker school uh, many, many years ago. So to produce uh, a great Pinot Noir uh, in Tuscany. And uh, fortunately, I found in, in this little property part of uh, my, family, uh, my family estate uh, uh, since uh, 1965, I found uh, a little piece of soil, so just two hectares of, uh, of vineyard, uh, perfectly able to produce a great Pinot Nero, very clay soil uh, in, a, in, a beautiful, in a beautiful slope going in uh, near to, to the a small river that make a very big excursion of temperature between night and day and make a, 
the Pino in a very, very best uh, uh, situation and very best condition to produce a great quality. And then uh, in the cellar, I tried to do uh, very, very gentle. Every, every operation are made by, by hand. I don't use uh, any uh, strong, uh, strong words uh, in terms of uh, machine and, uh, and products. I disdain the grapes by hand just to make sure that only the perfect berries are going to produce uh, the two wines I made. And uh, my first vintage was uh, 2006. And uh, now I am on the market with uh, uh, 2019. Uh, as you said, uh, you mentioned uh, three of, uh, for my personal opinion, uh, of best uh, uh, vintages of uh, my Pinot produced in uh, Monastero because uh, 2016, 17 and 19 are uh, three very, very great uh, vintages for different reasons. 2016 was uh, probably the most elegant vintages I ever made in Podere Monastero for both wines, eh? for, for La Pineta and for Campanaio as well, because the tannins in 2016 uh, uh, I, I had a, a, a very silky tannins, but uh, uh, more than silky. So it's very, very refined, very, very round, uh, soft. It's a, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a symphony in the mouth. That is the, the real perception I had since the beginning, since the first few hours after the fermentation start. And is day by day, the amount of... There's this, yep. In the 16, for me, there was the sense of ease. Everything yes. just came so easily and gently and beautifully. And so I'm super interested to see what the people tonight think about 19, whether it's actually imparting that similar characteristic of ease and kind of nobility Correct. about the wine. That's really... Correct. Uh, yeah. I, I have also, for my, for my, for my opinion... Uh, uh, a lot of similitude between uh, 16 and 19, uh, with uh, the only one uh, difference. Then the 2019 has uh, the same roundness, the same uh, uh, velvety touch, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, there is a little, little higher in, in body, in, in structure. 2019, it's a little bit uh, bigger. So when you say that, is it is a question of more tannin uh, uh, yes. in the wine? Okay. So yes. what will happen is tonight the guys will probably find that influence of the tannin in jar number two to be more overt, uh, but to give it some time. Yeah, but uh, for my personal opinion, uh, 2016, uh, it's really the, 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 the perfection, you know? The perfection mm -hmm. is in, in roundness, in... Uh, in finesse, in elegance, but uh, in terms of uh, vision for the future, yeah. uh, 2019 uh, probably is the best at the moment, right. okay? Because 2019 uh, has, for my personal opinion, uh, uh, a, a longer longevity. Mm -hmm. That is my, that is my, is my idea. If you, and, uh, if you were to compare the 17 next to the 19 that people are seeing here tonight, um, how, 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 was the, how does the vintage compare? Uh, 17 the 27, the yes, 2017, uh, as you know, uh, Tuscany, for Tuscany was a very, very hot uh, uh, season, very hot, uh, especially between the uh, end of spring and the beginning of fall. So the, the entire... Uh, the entire period of summer was very, very critical. But uh, fortunately, uh, considering uh, my geographic location, so I am located in a small, uh, in a kind of small valley. Mm -hmm. So uh, a 550 meters elevation with this uh, little river passing through from uh, north to south of the property, yeah. cutting uh, exactly the property in the middle. So I had... Uh, the, the opportunity uh, to get uh, some uh, acidity, good acidity. Uh, so comparing with the other producer in the other areas of uh, the same the same region. Mm -hmm. But of course, of course, in 2017, 
uh, you still have the perception of uh, the, the, the warm vintage, okay? So uh, you have, uh, at the same time, a, a good elegance, a good freshness, but of course, uh, the, the, the first touch in the mouth, uh, right. you have the perception of uh, uh, a warm, uh, mm -hmm. a warm, a warm mm -hmm. vintage. Uh, in terms of longevity, probably this is a medium, uh, a medium uh, size longevity. So this uh, 2017 will be uh, between uh, 15 to 20 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, 2019, for my personal opinion, uh, is uh, over 30. So that is, uh, that so is uh, it's, for it's sure. It's giving the Burgundians a bit of a run for their money. I think that's fantastic. Is, uh, <laughs> is, uh, this is for sure, for sure. Yeah. But uh, again, is, uh, I, am, uh, I am really happy. And uh, I was uh, extremely happy when uh, Dr. Wine in uh, 2017 uh, gave me uh, at that time uh, for, uh, for the third year in a row, uh, the best Italian Pinot Nero award because uh, in a very difficult vintage uh, to make uh, such a good wine uh, is uh, is a great uh, is a great compliment you know? yeah. Yeah. and it's almost the same uh, i had uh, in uh, in castellare with uh, isodi 2017 that uh, uh, mr bruce anderson was spectator remain impressed about uh, isodi 17 uh, that uh, he gave me 96 point uh, just a few just a few days ago probably you saw the publication yeah. in uh, in, in white spectator yeah yeah you know, it's a great achievement you know uh, alessandro for such a long time i used to be very hung up on comparing pinot nero with burgundy and you know it it, it was such a mistake and i'm kind of annoyed at myself for wasting so much time obsessively trying to find similar characteristics because they never will be the same. The terroir is different. The, the way of making the wine, everything is different. Um, but in, in, in recent years, and particularly from tasting your, your Pinot Nero, um, and uh, we, we have some from Katina Carlton in Alta Adige as well, uh, very different style from yours. I think yours Completely. is a, a lot more sophisticated, a lot, a lot more balanced, nuanced. Um, I, I'm not sure how long the Nero in Adige has been going, but it's far more simplistic and fruit forward. It's, it's a very clean expression, but certainly from a, a wine for grown-ups, I think yours is presenting particularly well. I'm gonna ask Lou to just see what he thinks about the, those two compared side by side, Lou, that you got in front of you. Yeah, sorry about that, my, my computer blew up. I'm back now. Um, <laughs> I think these are so typical of the way Alexandra makes his wines. Um, you know, he's often accused of, of being a, um, a, a new world man in an old world shell. Um, I think that is the way he, he, he tends to make his wines, that they're powerful, they're fruit driven, they're fruit forward. To me, you know, trying to compare this to Burgundy, as you said, it's just a waste of time. Yeah. It's, a, it's a different animal. Um, I can't even think of, in all honesty, even new world Pinots that sort of compare. It's, it, it's, it's a different thing. You know, Pinot Noir from Castellare. That's what it is. It's just a different, uh, yeah, it's just a different thing. I mean, the, no the notes that I get, it's very savory. Um, uh, Dave's you know, talking about the 17 showing more of that savory component than 19. Are yeah, only better? because it's a bit older, I think. Okay. I think it's, it's a little bit older, so it's had a bit more time to develop. I mean, right. the 19 fresh out of the box, it's his latest. Uh, latest uh vintage the but there's there's a very much a savory thing there almost a sage um herbal type of thing going on um the, uh, Col Col colin was asking about um using any stems in the crush alessandro do you do that at all or is everything you stem? i the stem uh, i the stem by hand i the stem by hand and then at the end uh, i add uh, 10% of stain into the mass of fermentation. 10%. Okay, got it. Yes. And no, no, I do 100% by hand. The, to, to the stain the grapes by hand, for me, it's a very uh, important thing, uh, right? column. Yeah. It's yeah. a very important column in my, in my production. And uh, yeah. 
I use this system since my first uh, my first vintage. I Production mean, is limited. It's yeah. very uh, I can do. Of course, if you are producing uh, uh, tons and tons of grapes, it's impossible. But with a little production like uh, I do, it's uh, it's possible, and for me, make a big difference. Well, why it's, 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 it's a very it's a yeah. very controversial style, though. I mean, do you, do you find that your compatriots in the the winemaking industry give you a hard time about this because it's so different to what someone you know coming out of uh, like I said a burgundy or a traditional Pinot Noir perspective it, there's power there, there's there's you know, so all sorts of elements you just don't uh, expect normally when you you front up to a glass of Pinot Noir yeah oh, regarding uh, uh, regarding the the, the uh, the discussion you, you said before, so on the comparison between a Pinot Noir expression in Castellina and Chianti and the Pinot Noir expression in, uh, in any other part of the world, of course, Burgundy, but uh, the, any, uh, any other part of the world. For me, cannot be the same. And this is, I think, is a, it's a value that cannot be the same because uh, I want to remember what my, uh, my mentor, uh, teach me many times. Uh, as you know, Lou, I was uh, a dolphin of uh, Giacomo Takis. You know? Giacomo yeah. Takis was, for me, not only my mentor, but was like a kind of a second father uh, because I had the opportunity to, to stay with him for 25 years and uh, to learn a lot from one of the best winemakers in the world, in the history, forever. And, uh, no. No, no, no other words to, to add, but uh, he always said a, a great wine, in a great wine can be recognized the grape, terroir, and uh, the, the soul of the winemaker. So, of course, you must recognize that this is a Pinot Noir made in Castellina and Chianti. So that is the signature of the wine. So, because otherwise, if it is not correct to say I want to find the Burgundy influence into the wine, this is not correct because this is a wine made in Castellina and Chianti. I have, a, I think, I have a, the right condition to make, like in Burgundy, to make a great Pinot Noir, but of course, different latitude make a different wine for sure. This is a uh, statistically and mathematically is uh, is for sure no 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 possible to 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 find uh, the the same uh, the same character that you can find in Burgundy in Castellina and Chianti because Castellina and Chianti has a marker as a marker in Castellina and Chianti is uh, a kind of uh, balsamic notes is a kind of rosemary uh, that is. Uh, the, the typical notes that you can find in the territory of Castellina and Chianti. This is extremely, extremely important. Uh, yeah. at, the side, at the side, of course, uh, and Podere Monastero, again, for my personal opinion, has uh, the great characteristic to produce a great uh, quality Pinot Noir. I have also the right vines, because as you know, my vines are arriving directly from Burgundy. But again, not because I want to get the character from Burgundy, but only because I wanted the, since the beginning to get uh, the highest experience in, in the propagation of the vines, in the genetic experience uh, to produce uh, vines uh, uh, for Pinot Nero. That's the reason because uh, I spent much more than a, than any other uh, Italian uh, Pinot Noir producer to get uh, the real the real vines uh, straight from uh, from Burgundy, and I have uh, the seven 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 clone that, as you know, is the most precious uh, uh, clone of uh, of uh, Burgundy Pinot Noir. I guess the other reason why I'm kind of glad to come to this realization that Pinot Nero will never be Burgundy because God forbid your Podero Monastero prices start to match what's going on in Burgundy these days. I'm very happy with being able to offer these fantastic wines at $69 where I can't even get, 
you know, Borgondo Rouge at that at that price these days. So um, yeah, all, all, all things told, it's a it's a fantastic uh, wine to experience qualitatively at this level. So thank you so much uh, for that, Alessandro. No, honestly, honestly, uh, from all over the world, all of my uh, customers, importers. Uh, uh, are giving me always uh, good compliments, uh, saying that uh, uh, with Poder Monastero wines we can offer a, a great quality wines uh, at a very uh, reasonable price. Yeah. So that is uh, that is a great compliment, and I am uh, happy and uh, especially and to, to um, offer especially at this garagista level where uh, you only make six thousand bottles of the Pinot Nero and half that for the Companaia. So these are tiny, tiny volumes that you're producing. Yes. Being able to produce this quality at this tiny scale and still keep the pricing realistic is, um, it makes it a bit of a find for sure. Yes. Right, so on that note, let's um, segue into the Companaios. We've got three of them tonight, the 15, the 17 and the 19. I'm very glad that we've been talking to Alessandro for some time about doing this tasting that I was able to get enough 15 just for tonight. And in fact, there was so much demand um, to come to attend this tasting that we could have sold a multiple more of seats, but we had no more 15. Uh, we used the last of it for this tasting. So maybe you can describe for us, we, we know very clearly that 16 in Tuscany um, is a wonderful year. I certainly for me personally, I'm seeing out of Brunello better Sangiovese in 16 than 15, but maybe that's where we can kick off. How, how do you compare 15 Accompanaio and, and 16 side by side? Uh, 15, uh, uh, I have a, a, a lot of uh, emotion when I talk, when I talk about uh, 15 vintage of Podere Monastero because it was my, my 10th uh, vintage, as you know. And uh, as you know, 15 has, uh, has uh, a, a special vintage uh, just to celebrate, uh, to celebrate the, the 10th anniversary, the 10th vintages of, uh, of this uh, Podere Monastero wines. And uh, for this reason, uh, uh, I want to say special thanks also to Corrad Winzer, that is a, a dear friend, uh, a sculptor. In, he lives in Germany, and, but... Uh, since the beginning, he was very close to me and he, he gave me as a beautiful gift uh, uh, these fantastic labels. And this uh, one I've got 15, behind me, that's the yes, Campanaro label. That, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And in, uh, in 2015, he decided to arrange a special, a special label uh, because uh, uh, celebrating the, the, tent, the tent vintages, he decided to put 10 different churches from 10 different religions. Uh, and in Pino Nero, 10 different names of Pino Nero in, in, different, uh, in 10 different languages. So Pino Nero in Italian, uh, Blau Burgunder, uh, Pino Noir uh, in Chinese, in Japanese. So that, that was a, a kind of little windows you know, inside of the label to represent. Uh, the 10th uh, years of, uh, of experience for this one. So 2015 for me was uh, uh, another fantastic vintage, uh, my 10th, uh, and thinking uh, when I was at the beginning with, uh, uh, I, I was really, uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, I spent uh, all of my, was uh, for me a huge investment. Now you, you can imagine, so it's a little project, but, uh, for me, as a uh, as a worker for uh, for a company like uh, Castellaris, so for me it was a huge investment. And after ten vintages, uh, to be there and uh, to present to the one to the market, uh, and with a great success, it was uh, a kind of a big, big, big emotion. And today, when I still have the opportunity to taste, and probably you are. Uh, one of the few in the world still having 2015 because 2015 was uh, sold in uh, five minutes. <laughs> so that is, uh, it's, uh, please uh, save uh, one or two bottles when I come to Singapore. Basta, we drink, it's finished. <laughs> we drink, we drink, 
Three like my friend, together. gone, yeah. it's gone, yeah. gone, yeah. gone. Yeah. gone. Yeah. Three yeah. 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 No, I am happy, I am happy. But anyway, 15, yeah. uh, 15 was a great vintage. Mm. Was a great vintage, very, very close to 2016. Uh, 2016 was a 100% in the elegance again, the tannins, a very beautiful, round, uh, soft. 2015 is the same, the same, very close to 2019. So very soft, very round, but at the same time with a great texture, with a great power. And uh, uh, the, the wine with, uh, with uh, the very long uh, longevity. And uh, so this is, uh, this is another uh, beautiful, beautiful vintage. Uh, uh, to drink right now would be fantastic but also with the potential to age for, for a long time. And uh, 2016, again, for, for Campanaio was, uh, was very, very elegant, very, very soft, of course, with a good, a good texture, because as you know, we do one maximum two cloisters per vine mm. uh, as my, my style of production in the vineyard of Campanaio, so 50 Cabernet, 50 Merlot. So we do a very good concentration. But again, uh, keeping the vines at the 550 elevation, so we are producing uh, not only uh, structure, but also uh, good acidity and then uh, good, good freshness. And ah, thanks to the, to the gentleman who yeah. says 17 is gorgeous. <laughs> and uh, yeah. thank you, thank you very much. I'm really happy and honored that you are uh, enjoying, uh, enjoying my wine. And then you have, uh, you say, 15? We've uh, got 15, 17, and 19 tonight of the company. 17, uh, 17 uh, it's again, probably, probably in, in Campanaio, uh, you have uh, uh, less, uh, less influence of the warm character than in uh, La Pineta, because Campanaio has a higher texture, higher body, and... Uh, but at the same time, even in 2017, it was a, a very hot uh, season. Uh, we save a very good, a very good acidity. And, uh, and I found in 2017 an extremely uh, beautiful drinkability at this time. Echo. I had uh, one bottle uh, a few days ago with, uh, with my family and friends. And 2017 was uh, delicious, really, really delicious so i think what's kind of cool alessandro when, when we're tasting wines like this um tiny uh, you know a tiny production like this the the blending component is removed it's always going to be 50 percent cabernet 50 percent merlot always, it's never always. Going to change, right so always, when, always. When, when we taste because the it's wine, the vineyard because it's the vineyard the 50 percent yeah is uh cabernet 50 yeah. percent there's, there's no declassification or second no, no, no. so the benefit of that is really what it drills down to on an empirical level is the vintage and what the winemaker does differently um, in the in the winery at the final at the final maturation time. So it's from a, 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 a theoretical point of view, it's a really interesting empirical look at, at vintage by vintage. And so with that note, I wanted to ask you, did you change anything in the vinification between 17 and 19? Or was it the same approach, pretty much the same? Uh, uh, the only the, the only difference uh, the only difference between seventeen and nineteen was uh, the number of days of uh, fermentation and okay. maturation. Okay. Uh, because uh, in twenty seventeen, uh, I I took a little bit a little bit shorter comparing with the the usual. Yeah. And in nineteen, I took a little bit longer. So it's uh, uh, normally I do uh, four weeks, four weeks and a half yeah. in 20, between the fermentation and the maceration. Yeah. Uh, in 2017, I had uh, uh, three weeks and a half. In 2019, I did five, week, five weeks. Okay, that's so a that significant difference in time. But that's being determined by the ripeness the bricks and the alcohol level, I presume. Yes, is a, a mix of things. And uh, uh, of course, uh, 
the to 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 pick the the grape in the right moment is one of the secret of success for all wines yeah. in in the world yeah and uh, this is also depend of the sensitivity of the the, the winemaker you know when I taste the grapes and when I taste the the berries and the, uh, I have to say yes or not uh, uh, or it's a good moment or it would drive me crazy way. it would drive me insane and, uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, and especially for for Pinot, this is extremely important yeah. because if Cabernet and Merlot give you little flexibility, mm -hmm. Pinot doesn't give you any flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. So Pinot, you must uh, pick the grape. Uh, uh, if if you taste that is the right moment, you have to pick in that to moment. So yeah. half a day is it's over, or before it's no it's not perfectly it's right. Great. So it's. Yeah. Uh, I it's, think that, uh, it's extremely important. I think that when you talk to winemakers from all over the world, they have different opinions on everything. But the one thing they agree on is how much of a prima donna Pinot Noir is around the world. Yeah. It's, just, it's so <laughs> well, <blame laughs> difficult. But everybody is obsessed with it. Even people who don't make Pinot Noir still love exactly. it. Exactly. This, yeah. is, this is the right, uh, the, the right definition of uh, Pinot Noir. It's a, it's a prima donna. No? It's a, yeah. It's the grape and need the, who need the, all the attentions. Yeah. So because uh, Pinot Nero need uh, special attention for uh, for maturity, for leaves, for canopy, for everything, everything. You must make 100% of attention to that grape if you want to succeed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I saw one uh, one message from. Uh, uh, one of uh, of your dear guests uh, that is say uh, he found a, a notes of meat in mm -hmm. the taste. I totally agree. As I said to you before, uh, the the this kind of uh, balsamic notes are the 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 signature of that uh, specific terroir in this side of Chianti area. This is a specific signature. So these notes of meat, eucalypt, rosemary, flower rosemary is, is, is the signature of that side of Tuscany. There's definitely that rosemary element. I, 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 I describe it more as menthol than mint. It's a green element there. But yes. It, to me, it's more camphor, menthol Because when I think of mint, I think of the Australian sort of uh, eucalypt, minty type stuff that comes out of South Australia. Yeah. <laughs> This is slightly no. different in my view, Alexandra. It's more, it's more a, a menthol, uh, menthol character. Menthol, yes. That's that's what I get anyway. Um, now, yeah. I've got a question for you though. The 2017, obviously you were dealing with a very hot year, right? But I'm, I'm not getting any heat. Obviously you did something pretty, pretty good here. So I'm not getting, while there's a lot of power and there's a lot of body to the wine, it, it, it's it's not showing any signs of heat stress at all, which I have no, no, no. in some other wines, I must say. For sure, this is a, this is the, because uh, uh, I took, uh, I took the grapes uh, in a, in a perfect moment. I tried to, to manage the canopy and the leaves in a, in a, in a, in a right condition, because when you have a, a very uh, stress vintages like 2017, you must manage, you must drive the vineyard following that situation. Because for example, if you, if you use the same systems that you use normally when you have a, a cold seasons, uh, you make a real mistake because uh, the, the the vines uh, in that situation, the grapes in that situation, like 2017, must be completely covered, and you you must try to cover the the the, the grapes uh, as much as you can. So you have to leave all of leaves uh, as possible in into the vineyard. Otherwise, the risk is to burn to burn the skin and then burning the skin, the skin, you are burning the tannins, you are burning the polyphenol, and then you can get in the wine, the character of a cooked tomato, that is the real, the real character when you have a, a very hot, 
hot season, uh, a hot uh, vintage wine. And uh, so Lou, finally that's now his, I can uh, understand why you don't like cooked tomato. It throws back to your Italian heritage <laughs> <laughs> of drinking bad no, wine. Now it's, it's understood. <laughs> Uh, now in, in, in it, in, for me, technically speaking, when we say when when we taste the wine and we taste the cooked tomato, is is we immediately classify the wine. Uh, uh, so in a in a in a hot in a hot uh, in a hot season, no. So in a hot uh, harvest. It, it also reminds me of my sister's cooking, which is. Uh... Uh, anyway. <laughs> it's very funny, Sandra, because we're traveling in Italy and Lou's the only Italian I ever met who can't eat tomato. You know, I thought it was like yeah. in the DNA, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's the first and only one I've ever met. <laughs> uh, 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 the, the, wine, uh, the wine must be always vibrant, you know? So always, always must be alive and stand, always make... make must make you an emotion. So when you drink the wine, uh, your your palate must be vibrant. You know? yeah, so because sure. that that means that the wine has a has a beautiful freshness, has a good acidity, has enough acidity uh, to make the wine stand. Mm. Alessandro, are you are you tempted as you do a Castellare? Are you tempted to make a pure Cabernet and a pure Merlot? Uh, no, nice so I, I, I decided since the beginning uh, to to make a Campanaio as a 50-50. And uh, honestly, I ferment every vintage separate, yeah. but uh, I never had the, the temptation to, to make uh, separate, uh, separate wines. Because, uh, so this is the, the asset I give to my company since the beginning, and I want to to stay on this uh, on this way. Uh, the only thing I am thinking, uh, you know this because we we discussed in the last time we met at the Vin Italy. Uh, I'm thinking to to make and next year I start the excavation. I have a little piece of soil in the other in the southwest part of the property to produce uh, a white wine. One hundred percent. You remember? I told you. Yeah, I tried to discourage you, but obviously it didn't. One hundred percent Sauvignon Blanc. That was yeah. my is my dream. I'm still not. A, I'm still not a fan of that idea, Alessandro. I think what you're making now is superb. <laughs> but <laughs> it's your money. Uh, <laughs> so Dave's asking Alessandro uh, between seventeen and nineteen Campanaio, Is the oak treatment different? Uh, in, 17, in, 17, in 17, uh, I did uh, only 10% uh, New York, uh, and the rest was a second time. In 19, I, I did as usual, so 50% new and 50% uh, second time. Yeah, much more vanilla, Dave, I agree. Yeah, yes, yeah. just, just in, for the same reason, so just in order to save the freshness and to bring the freshness uh, in the in, in the first uh, in the first part of the tasting no so and I, I don't want it in 2017 that the wine uh, be dominated by the oak yeah alessandro i really like where this 2019 is going i really like it grazie, it's grazie. i think this might be your best frankly yeah i i i as i said before i Totally agree that for my personal opinion, 2019 since the beginning is my my best uh, my best vintage, especially for uh, for longevity. So this wine has a huge uh, agility for over over 25 30 years for sure. Yeah, it's coming together nicely. How, how old are the vines now, my friend? Uh, Twenty. Okay, better. Twenty uh, in in 2019, the vines. Uh, as 20 because I planted in uh, 1999. Okay, so it's all French oak, I assume. Yeah, I use a 100% 100% uh, uh, French oak. I only did uh, in the past uh, in the first vintages, but only in the first vintages, just a little trial of American oak for Campanaio. Uh, I did uh, just uh, two three vintages, uh, 2007, eight, and nine. I tried. 
But uh, at the end, uh, I decided that uh, French oak uh, Allié, 100% is, uh, is the best for both wine. For Campanaio, I use uh, medium toast. And for La Pineta, I use a light toast. Yeah, well, Robert and I have got a love affair happening with uh, Italian Merlot at the moment. Yeah. We're I'm just sorry. in love with it. <laughs> I've got to say, you were one of the pioneers of Merlot in the Castellare region. And yeah. yeah, this the quality of the Merlot coming through here. That's why I'm tempted to try and sneak. Next time I'm there, I'm going to sneak a, a, into your barrel room and get some pure Merlot because I'm a big fan, big fan. But um, we, I, honestly, I believe this is the best one you've done so far. It's coming together beautifully. It really is. Yeah, I've, got, yeah. I've got no doubt that given how small the volumes are, uh, these will be cleared out way long before Mr. Suckling or uh, whoever's representing Mr. Parker these days put some notes to it, um, that it's uh, already looking very encouraging. Well, it's always a problem with Alessandro's wines. Yeah. Um, we, we rock into Verona at Vinitaly. He takes us down to the tasting room and he goes, try this. We have it. We go, this is fantastic. He goes, but I've got none left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then he says... I'm sorry. <laughs> then he says, okay, listen, listen. You know, we'll do, I'll give you this much. So I take everything he can give me and then... We go to sell it, and I say, okay, listen, Alexander in Singapore, they're obsessed with ratings. What's the rating? He goes, I don't know. It's all sold already. <laughs> so by the time it gets rated, it's already gone. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's so really for history at that point. <laughs> the only place where it's still left is actually in Singapore, but the amounts are so small, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, yeah, you are the greatest, Lou. You are the greatest. You are the greatest. <laughs> Please don't tell him that too much, Alore. <laughs> no, no, he's, uh, he's, uh, we became, uh, we became, immediately, we became immediately dear friends. We became immediately dear friends. <laughs> Us fact, guys, have got to keep together. I don't like the fact you lost seventeen kilos, though. No, That's it's that impressive. Awesome. Oh. Yeah. So before we say uh, ciao to you, are there any questions from anybody? Uh, uh, Vincent's got a question. Is your opinion why the same in Pinot Negro? So uh, maybe you want to answer that directly, Alessandro. I think Vincent, uh, I think you let, me, let, me, let me see again. One second. Allora, is your Pinot Negro the same Pinot Negro? What he's That's saying is Nero the same as, as a Pinot Negro. Uh, Pinot Noir. Pinot, uh, it's a, it's a little, it's a little darker than uh, if you take uh, as a, as a note of uh, Alto Adige Pinot Nero. Of course, my my Pinot Nero is a little bit darker. That is, uh, that is uh, for sure, uh, because again, this is another uh, typical character of uh, my my terroir, uh, but. In, in general, in general, uh, in order to, to see the right, the right color of, uh, of Pinot Nero, you have to wait at least, uh, at least three or four years. So now if you, if you check, for example, the 2015 or 2016, you really have the right uh, notes of, of color of, uh, of, my, of my Pinot Nero. Because at the beginning, of course, the, the polyphenols, the, especially the anthocyanins, and, and especially that are the responsible of the color, at the beginning are more uh, uh, in terms of uh, intensity. They are a little bit bigger at the beginning. And then step by step, the DNA of Pinot Noir is uh, the color became more, uh, uh, more lighter. So a question from Dave um, on your description of the soils of the Campanaia site. I think, he, uh, yeah, maybe you interpret. You, yeah. yeah, it means uh, uh, it's, it's a perfect uh, mix. The, the La, Pineta, La Pineta is a clay soil. The Campanaio is at the other side of the valley. Is a is a classic soil that I have in there are there are in many other in, in Chianti Classico. So it's it's a perfect mix between sand, lime, uh, uh, sabbia, limo, and uh, and uh, limestone. No, I'm scared. So it's a 
it's a, it's a, exactly the, it's called a, a medium because you have a, the right percentage. So 33, 33, 33. 33 is sand, 33 limo, and 33 limestone. And that, Dave, that it is the, I think that Dave's got a dodgy um, Eastern European translator um, on, on your website because I think the word skeleton should read calcaris, which is the description of the uh, skeleton. Yeah, because this is the area where I have uh, some uh, uh, calcareous uh, in, inside of the of the composition of the soil. Yeah. But uh, skeleton for my for my idea means uh, uh, rich in, in uh, rocks. Skeleton, skeleton, oh, okay. uh, skeleton, skeleton in uh, in Italian is skeletro, and skeletro means. Uh, richness in uh, in rocks in a uh, little little rocks so we have a, a lot of natural drainage so never the water remain at the rustic level so lou do you want to ask alessandro the traditional question I, i'm sure i know what the answer is you know i have to alessandro yeah. every time we talk to our winemaker guests we finish with one question and that is when you're not drinking your own wine and no one's watching what do you like to drink Champagne. Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> no, I was. I would have bet on Burgundy. <laughs> and champagne. 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 Talk us through this. What, what's the story? What ever, ever. Champagne is uh, is uh, is my Your relax uh, relax uh, drinking. Oh, fantastic. Yes, uh, yes I love I love champagne. I love. Uh, also, some uh, some beautiful Neto Classico of Italian uh, producers like uh, Giulio Ferrari, Bella Vista, Cadel Bosco. So there are uh, some very good Italian uh, uh, bubbles. Very good. That's a surprise. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, of course. Uh, if uh, if I have the occasion, but it's not for my pocket. Uh, uh, to drink some uh, wonderful Burgundy wines, uh, I would love. I would love to taste that. Mm. Well, but uh, unfortunately, 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 the pr uh, in Italy the price uh, of some uh, good Burgundy are it's crazy, uh, right? Really, really. Eva's crazy, asking. So. Eva's asking about Franchicotta, and I've got a very specific opinion on. Prosecco versus Franchicotta, I prefer Prosecco. I don't know why, because there's as many awards in the Oh, I agree awards. with you that there are, uh, there are some uh, very, very beautiful producers of Prosecco that they are making a, an yeah. extraordinary pro production. So yeah. I absolutely agree with you, 100%, 100%. Well, I guess the moral some of the story is we should all just keep drinking more wine to find the ultimate holy grail. So on that note, thank Alessandro, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And everybody. Grazie mille. Yeah, grazie ragazzi. And next week we're drinking McWilliams wines from The Hunter. So a completely yeah, Mount different. Pleasant. Mount, pleasant. Mount Pleasant. Sorry, I get them mixed up every time. So a completely yeah. different uh, proposition. But I hope to see you all again then soon. Thanks so much, Alessandro. Alessandro grazie, thank you. grazie a voi. Grazie, Lou. From grazie my heart, always a special thanks. To, to take care about uh, my little boys. Thank you very much. <laughs>